Along with conservation of energy, conservation of momentum, and kinematics, Forces in equilibrium is one of the major frameworks for solving mechanics problems when you're working with physics. And there are several different types of equilibrium that we'll be going through in this video, as well as the different equilibrium states that have certain keywords that will point you toward using an equilibrium model in order to solve a problem. So one of the conditions of equilibrium is that the vertical forces balance out. So the forces in the upward direction equal the forces in the downward direction. Similarly, the forces in the left direction equal the forces moving right. One of the things to be aware of throughout physics is that if you have angles and uh, unusually askew forces, try to resolve them into a vertical and horizontal component, or at least components where they're exactly opposing each other. Even if they are at angles, you want one to be heading in this way and one to be heading in the opposite direction. So that may involve sines and cosines and things like that but you want to resolve all of your forces into a vertical and horizontal component, if at all possible. The third type of equilibrium is called rotational equilibrium, and that is where your torque in the clockwise direction equals your torque in the counterclockwise direction. Forces are something that we cover in other videos, and torque as well will be covered in separate videos, but these are the things you must consider when you're thinking about a system that's truly in equilibrium. Now equilibrium itself, all it says is that there is no net force on an object. And so remember that F equals MA. So if there's no force, therefore there will be no acceleration. That doesn't necessarily mean that the object is completely stationary and not moving. And that gets us into the types of equilibrium. Static equilibrium, which means that there's no acceleration and no velocity. And keywords for that will be an object at rest, a stationary object, or anything that tells you that the object is not moving whatsoever. Dynamic equilibrium is one that often confuses students because the object does have velocity, but it isn't accelerating. That means it is moving at a constant speed or a constant velocity. And other keywords that can clue you into that will be no acceleration or terminal velocity. These are all terms that can clue you into the fact that you're working with a dynamic equilibrium type of problem. Dynamic equilibrium is something you see with a skydiver who is falling and reaches what they call a terminal velocity. Another example of a dynamic equilibrium might be an elevator that is being pulled upward by a tension force and pulled downward by a gravitational force so that it continues to rise but at a constant velocity. Because there is no net force, there is no acceleration. But if it had velocity to begin with, that means that it can be moving, yet not accelerating. That is the definition of dynamic equilibrium. So recognize the conditions for equilibrium. Recognize that if you have angles, you often will want to resolve them into a vertical and horizontal component. And be aware of the fact that equilibrium can mean that the object isn't moving at all. But it can also mean that if you have equilibrium between forces, but the object was moving initially, it can have a velocity, yet no acceleration. That is still in equilibrium, and the net forces will still equal zero.